Hi. Okay, well, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I realize that I haven't done uh, people in history for a while. And <laughs> I'm slowly learning technology, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do a slideshow of this person. So, <laughs> kind of wish I had figured this out sooner, but anyway. So, this one is one of my more famous. Uh, I guess Lily Elsie was. Uh, Marie Prevost wasn't so much. Joseph Jefferson kind of was. Anyway, so this individual is Edwin Booth. The Booth family was incredibly famous even before John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, we all know that story. We're not going to get into it. So, Edwin had... Let's see, there was, of course, John Wilkes, uh, I think it's pronounced Junius, and then there was Asia, so there were two other brothers and a, a sister. And, of course, one of them was named after the father, and the father was an actor as well, so he kind of brought everyone into the family business, so to speak. Um, Edwin was born in 1833. And he was, I believe, like the middle brother, seems like. I think, yeah, I believe he was, and he was born in Maryland, and actually, <laughs> The brother that was named after the dad, uh, I want to say it's Eunice, but that's a girl's name, so I think it is Junius. He was a terrible actor. I mean, he was awful. Of course, there was John Wilkes Booth, who was an amazing actor. I mean, girls loved him. <laughs> I mean, if you were to bring him in today... like the Chris Pratt or Tom Hiddleston of of his day. So he was he was a good looking young man and very talented. Girls loved him. Edwin was he was a good actor, but it was kinda like he was overlooked by his because of his father's um talent and then his brother's talent. He didn't get along with John Wilkes. In fact, John Wilkes didn't get along with any of the family because his arrogance level went through the roof. And you have to understand, before he went, before he did what he did, it was just all about acting. He was just arrogant because he was arrogant. <laughs> so, um, However, Edwin made his stage debut in 1849, and that was in Boston. Um, there's no telling. Uh, I couldn't find exactly. Oh, of course. So Richard III was his debut. 
and he was acting alongside his father. It doesn't say what he what character he played in the play. And then in eight, and then the next year at the New York City National Theater he made another appearance in the in the uh stage play. I think I said film. <laughs> you have to bear with me. Sometimes I say things, but <laughs> um in this stage play the iron chest and he was the character Wilford and unfortunately he had to cut that short because his father became extremely ill so because of his father's illness he had to go back to Boston and play Richard III. His father was the star of the show. Nobody else would help his dad, so he had to go back. Um, his father passed away in 1852. That same year, he went on a world tour, which consisted of going to Australia and Hawaii and, I mean, all sorts of places. And he was gaining all sorts of popularity. Now, it was about him. So he was rising up in the public eye as uh, one of the booth. So um, despite how much he really despised his brothers. There was one point in 1864, there was a production of Julius Caesar. They performed, oh, let's see. And Edwin played Brutus, John Wilkes played Mark Antony, and Junius played Cassius. And that was the only time that the three brothers performed together on stage. And it was a benefit. And the funds were used to erect a statue of William Shakespeare. And so that statue that you see in Central Park, <laughs> that production in 1864 helped to fund that. Um, after that production, um, Edwin went to work and he began, he began this production of Hamlet, which he became famous for. That was his, before John Barrymore ever was, he became famous for the role of Hamlet. And it turned out that there was this title going around as the Hundred Knights of Hamlet, which he played at, he performed at the Promenade. And so there was the title at the Promenade called the Hundred, um, the, the Hundred Knights of Hamlet. Because he had the record 
for um, the known knights of play of playing Hamlet. So it was a hundred nights he played in a row for playing Hamlet. In 1922, John Barrymore broke that record. <laughs> Which I guess if anyone was going to, it would be John Barrymore. Um, so, when his brother assassinated the president, He, of course, made sure to grab the body because he didn't want anything happening to it. Fair enough. At first, um, I guess he wasn't going, they weren't going to give it to him. So he, he was the one that took care of everything, gave his brother a proper burial. Nobody knows where, and he never said. So nobody knows. My mom tried to tell me this elaborate story <laughs> saying that, he was buried at sea. No, he wasn't buried at sea. Maybe he was, maybe he was not. Who knows? Nobody does, except for <laughs> Edwin. So maybe he was buried at sea. Anyway, um, unfortunately, because of John Wilkes Booth's actions, Edwin had to step away from acting. I mean, that was just a given. He had to do it. <laughs> I mean, it, would you go to a play knowing that the person who assassinated the president is related? I'm sure he got tons of backlash. Well... Um, yeah, when he finally did return, um, he did more business actions. His brother, the one that was really, uh, Junius, they started working together a little bit. Um, because he was better with business than he was with acting. Um, actually in, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, in 1863 to 1867, Edwin had managed the Winter Garden Theater in New York City, and he would stage Shakespearean tragedies. And then he bought the Walnut Street Theater in Philadelphia. So he had these two theaters, and it seems like he... It seems like his brother was helping him with that, and then he was also managing um, for several actors. Not his brother, though, not Edwin, though. Then in 1867, a fire damaged the Winter Garden Theater, and it had to be demolished, so it's no longer there. <laughs> Just in case you were wanting to go there, it doesn't exist anymore. In fact, I don't even know where it would have stood. Um, yeah, it doesn't even have where it would have been. But... Uh, he then, Edwin then built his own theater, 
that was called the Booth Theater in Manhattan. And the first production was Romeo and Juliet, which he starred in. He was Romeo. And unfortunately, his own theater wasn't a success. And there's this panic of 1873, which was kind of like, which brought on like this depression. So yeah, there was a depression before the big depression in the 30s. And it left Edwin in bankruptcy, the, the theater in 1874. And, you know, it kind of left him so that he could go on tour. There, I don't really know what happened to that other theater that was in Philadelphia. It doesn't really mention it ever again. So, um, but he did marry. But unfortunately, it was only for three years, um, his wife sadly died. Uh, he had a daughter. He then remarried, which is kind of weird because he had, his first wife's name was Mary, and then he married again. And his second, his second wife's name was Mary. So... And she, again, died. He was just very unlucky. That's too bad. But it sounds like he only had the one daughter. He then had a private club. He, he founded the Players. Uh, it was a private club for performing literacy and visual artists. I don't know if it's still... Oh, it's still there. So... Let's see, it's in Manhattan. 16 Gramercy Park, Manhattan, New York. So if you ever want to swing by there... <laughs> That was um, Edwin Booth's little contribution. Um, his final performance was his signature role, Hamlet, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And that was in 1891, which That same year, he ended up having a small stroke. And then in 1993, he suffered another stroke, and that was the year that he, he passed away. And it's because he... It says that he he died in his apartment in the players' club. So it also says that his bedroom in the club has been kept untouched since his death. So that's kind of eerie. <laughs> and then there's also an interesting fact that he apparently saved Robert Lincoln's life. Um, I guess that Robert Lincoln had fallen onto train tracks and 
or something to that effect. And anyway, Edwin was there and was able to save him, so. But anyway, um, so, um, their sister Asia didn't really do that much in acting once she got married. I mean, she did when she was younger, and then once she got married, it, she kind of abandoned the whole thing. Um, but... Yeah. Um. So. So that's Edwin Booth for you. I I did have a few people asking me. They're like. Who even is Edwin Booth? I mean, what did he do? Well, this is what he did. <laughs> he was a Shakespeare actor. In fact, the um, the entire family, the father was. I don't know much about the mother. But the father was more of an influence. And then Edwin. Edwin did more than the rest of the family. I mean, the John Wilkes... He was a good actor, but he, once he found out how much of a fan base he had, yeah. <laughs> so, and, yeah, and, and then the other brother was not very good at the acting, but he was really good at business. And so he used that to his advantage. Again, I think it's Junius. So, anyway, I will try to do more of these uh, people in history, and again, I will do the slideshow so you can see who they are. Um, I probably should change the other ones. I'll try to do that. So, but anyway, yeah, this is Edmund Booth, um, brother to John Wilkes Booth. Uh, 